The big day is almost here, folks, and so I visited the Museum of Science located in Boston to talk to Charles Wilcox, an astronomer, to cover the what, where, and when of the solar eclipse and why only certain parts of this country are going to have the best seats. So I have you here today, of yes. course, to talk about the solar eclipse yes. that's coming up next Monday, right? Around 1 p.m. people will be looking up the sky for it, right? Um, between about 1.30 and 4 p.m. Okay. Uh, the sun will look like it ha has a bite taken out of it. What that means is that the moon will pass across a portion of the sun's disk. Now, it will not totally block, up the, su block the sun's disk here because we're not on the track of totality. The track of totality in this eclipse runs between about Oregon through Wyoming, through Missouri, down through South Carolina on a track that in the, basically the moon's shadow is going to be moving at over a thousand miles an hour uh, along that track. So it will completely cover the, across the United States in about an hour and a half, but not where we are. We're going to be in the partial shadow area, meaning that the sun will be partially but not completely covered up. That during an eclipse, the moon can almost exactly cover up the sun because it passes in front of the sun, but no more. So that means that for about two and a half minutes along that track of totality, anywhere from two to two and a half minutes, the moon will cover up the visible bright disk of the sun. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, so it has been a big deal. Everybody's talking about the solar eclipse. Yes. Now, last year, I remember staying up late to see the moon eclipse. Yes. All right. So tell me, what's the significance or how important is solar eclipse versus the moon eclipse? A lunar eclipse, it happens at night. So you just notice th strange things happening to the moon. It gets to be dark and you have a fuzzy bite taken out of it. And then if it's a total lunar eclipse, the moon goes this dull red color. But it really doesn't affect daylight around you. you don't have the kind of visceral response you get when you're standing in the middle of a field or out in a, on a bright sunny day and all of a sudden in the middle of the day everything gets as dark as deep twilight because no direct sunlight is reaching you and the only thing that's reaching you is sunlight from the areas around the shadow that are not in eclipse so as the shadow sweeps across you you get just a little bit of light there but the brightest stars come out the planets come out and animals exhibit strange behavior because they don't know what's going on. They think night is coming. And it's weird because in the just before totality, if you are on that total track, you get um, city lights coming on, and yet the sun is still in the sky. Like how often do we get to witness a solar eclipse? We can get to witness a partial eclipse of the sun, I'd say about every 10 to 15, 20 years. It's a little bit irregular, but any given location on the Earth will only experience a total solar eclipse w once every 360 years on average. So now, that's when was our last solar eclipse? Our last solar eclipse anywhere near Boston was uh, in 1925. And, oh the next, and the next one won't be until 2079. Now there are certain precautions that uh, people should attend to while waiting for the eclipse, right? Such so yeah. as do not look straight up. Yes, and that is good advice anytime. You should never, under any circumstances, look directly at the sun during an eclipse or not during an eclipse or any time that the moon does not completely cover up the sun without proper eye protection. That means approved solar eclipse glasses, which I know are being sold and have sold out in many places. There is a huge demand for them all over the country. Um, you need to wear those solar eclipse glasses. Uh, if you're using a telescope, you have to have an, astro an astronomical solar filter on the front end of the telescope, not where the eyepiece is, but on the front end of the telescope. There's a real risk of permanent and severe eye damage unless you wear the solar eclipse glasses. And because this eclipse is not going to be total here in New England, you have to wear the solar eclipse glasses at all times. Wow. Yeah. Now, since the solar eclipse, like the one that we're about to experience, and it's so rare, mm -hmm. what are astronomers, what are you looking forward to? Mm -hmm. What kind of information you're hoping maybe to gather, learn more yeah. about the sun? Well, people are always learn trying to find out more about solar eclipses because of the, any information you can get about the, it tells us a lot about the sun's outer atmosphere. When the disk of the sun is hidden, 
again at those places where it is total. You will see the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona, which is some really rarefied gas at a temperature of millions of degrees. And the structure of the corona tells us a lot about what's going on in the sun. Every time we see a total eclipse, we get a little better estimate about the size of the sun, the size of the moon. We refine it. We nail that down a little bit better. And a planet such as Jupiter, where it has so many moons, Yes. so how frequent is the solar eclipse happen up there? Well, a solar eclipse might happen every day or every day and a half somewhere. Because the planet is so big, the sun looks so small in the sky, um, that, for example, if you looked at a telescope, you, uh, if you looked at a very powerful telescope or were in a space program out near Jupiter, you would see the shadow of the moons Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, the four large moons that Galileo saw, passing across the disk of Jupiter, making a shadow, a fuzzy shadow, every day or every couple of days. Now, as the moon keeps on moving farther and farther away from the Earth, what does this mean for the solar eclipse? What it means is that in the court, in 600 million years or so, there won't be any more solar eclipses. The moon is moving away from the Earth, but very, very slowly. It's moving away from the Earth for about one inch per year. And that means that on the course of the next 600 million years, we'll have at some point seen our last total solar eclipse. Now, billions of years from now, the moon may start to come back in towards the Earth again and eventually get so close that it will break up and form a ring of debris, much like the rings of Saturn are around Saturn. Be careful with that. Now, you make a lot of animations here at yes. the planetarium. Mm -hmm. For those who do not get to witness this eclipse, will you be making an animation to have, them ex mm -hmm. have that experience? Yeah. We will be having live shows up to... We have live shows at several times during the day here in the planetarium. The eclipse being at about 2.30 or so in the afternoon on Monday, there will be two live pro uh, programs, two live lectures in the planetarium where the presenter can bring up an animation. We simulate what it's going to be a totality with the understanding that that's not what you're going to see in the Boston area, but it's what you could see if you were in the path of totality. Indeed, it's going to be an experience of a lifetime, so do not miss it and remember to stay safe.